Hi, my name is Suzy Chen, and I do graphic, product branding, and visual arts and social design. It is an honor for me to be here to share my talk with so many experienced designers and you guys three years after my graduation. So thank you, it's nice that for the invitation. Um, I was born in Guangdong, China, and moved to Macau when I was very young. Macau is a place once colonized by Portugal. It's like Hong Kong is a very um, culturally integrated place. Um, I spent my first 21 years in China. Um, when I was 21, I went to study at London College of Communication, UAL. I graduated in 2019 and went back to China. In 2021, I moved to Germany to live and work. Today, my topic will revolve around how I face culture shock as I live and study in different places over the years and shape and influence my desires through different life experiences. Um, a few years ago, I read this short article from Ruben Patter's book, The Polity of Desire, which mentioned the difference between traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese. In the book, it says people who use traditional Chinese, which meaning in Hong Kong and Macau, will say those who use traditional simplified, sorry, the uh, people who use traditional Chinese meaning in Hong Kong and Macau will say those who use simplified Chinese meaning in Macau, uh, in Midland have no heart, and those who use simplified Chinese will say those who use traditional Chinese have no friends. So this is actually a very good example of the cultural difference that I have experienced since I was a child. This is a common phenomenon in colonialism. Hatred between people often caused by confused identities. It can be said that I feel these gaps all the time and have to learn to live with them. As a Chinese born in the 90s, my generation is catching up with China for this growing decades. In the past 20 years, the experience of our generation of Chinese young people is condensed and very fast moving. Guangdong, the place where I was born, is also the first place where Made in China was established in the 90s. I remember when I was a kid, my parents' friend became a millionaire in a few years because of the factory producing fake Gucci bags for its boat, um, and went bankrupt for, in a few years for other, other reasons. All this experience gave me a very deep memory. This is a crazy unspoken experience that expansion brings. And this leads people in our age to always have the illusion that the war is a process that only rays forever and never falls. In 2016, with um, this agreement of local education, I applied for UALLCC and dropped it out for my damn university to, go to come to London. So London is another crazy, pra crazy place for me, but sort of place where people often scream on the tube. When I started to learn, I was like a greedy mouse that fell into a big box of rice. That's what I would say in Chinese. I was trying to observe all the information and culture that was around me. I wasn't yet fluent in English and spent all my time studying like a nerd. I studied, um, I started to explore freely about typography, visual language, and um, for example, in my visual archive project, I stitched fonts by hand and tried the college idea of the town without purpose. Um, also, um, such as one of my projects on consumerism and cute culture called Kawaii Salon. Um, also, a project about um, Maria microplastics. Also, a project about mutation food in the UK supermarket and project for international students in the UK called Nobody Asked Me, and more typographical projects. Um, so London represented infinite possibility for me at the time, but at the same time, because of language and culture issues, it seems that all these possibilities were irrelevant to me. I felt like I was in a bubble, so I want to be more involved in the society, so I started a part-time job. I've done a lot of part-time jobs, during my first Christmas break in London, I worked part-time in an Asian supermarket until 12 o'clock every day. At night, drunk people often came in to, to steal alcohol or sweat fake credit cards. The Hong Kong owner of that supermarket always paid me cash away for tax evasions. <laughs> Later, I went to work as waiter in Chinatown restaurant where I make Fujian 
uh, migrants who were smuggled into UK around 2000. And they told me about the Dover tragedy. My Chinese college told me that one of their friends almost went on that trip. That was a big shock to me, who was born in the 90s in southern China and where everything seemed to be sufficient. It made me realize that the society and the world seemed to be working in many ways that I didn't know about. I asked them, why are you risking your life to leave your hometown? Poverty is worse than that, they told me. During the day, I would study and work and write at unit. And after class, I spent 30 minutes on the northern night to go to the part-time job. The 30-minute process is like traveling from an ideal utopian to the real world. This got me rethink about what I've learned can relate to the real world I'm facing. This experience is an important turning point. I started to create from my real experience and observation of society. I graduated in 2019, and in my graduation project, I wanted to do something about my own culture. So I look back to my um, culture background, Macau. Macau is another weird and crazy place for me. It used to be colony, and it is the only place in China where, China where you can legally gamble. Gambling in tourism is making up about 50% uh, of the economy. This casino, known as Venetians, Parisian, and Londoner, encapsulate what American capitalists see as European style and six them in this oriental town. As the main economy income of Macau, the development of the global uh, gambling industry along in Macau, China, br brings huge profits and disadvantage. So my desire is to inspire local residents to communicate with the government through a series of prints. They are made to push the government balance between development and sustainability. I design advertisement of Macau Casino based on traditional Chinese rituals to make people memorize the that city by the way of sacrifice, it's like burning fake money, through which the information of protests will be carried to every corner of the city. So this project is the first one I had great pleasure with, but it had a problem that it wasn't a real project. I wasn't in the city, I wasn't interacted with the people. So the idea that I want to do something real gradually became stronger and stronger in my mind. At the end of 2019, I graduated, Five years of school life gave me a strong desire to embrace society. So I started creating jobs for myself. From 2019 to 2021, I divided my work into three categories and continued to do them. One is about culture. As a freelance designer, I work with different cultural institutions and create visuals for them. The second part is that I set up a brand. I design products and sell them directly to customers. And the third part is that I'm in insisting on doing a social project um, about children's companionship under uh, Made in China. So the first part is about culture. This is a collaboration with artist students, art company, Made in Company. The discussion background of the exhibition is the current uh, culture chaos in China, like TikTok, etc. My visual solution is to use the visual and wide visual language, just like animals in the white jungle and even grow right, widely into the skin of another animal. But the sixth turn continue to cooperate. Op operate. So this is a project took place during, uh, during pandemic. It's nice that cooperate with Dropbox and invites different artists to express some opinion for everyone during quarantine period. And this comment can be even bad ideas that just make people laugh. So my whole idea is about how to survive your relationship or marriage during isolation. This is a exhibition about women's uh, space and statue and times in Guangdong Tans Museum. And I also make project called Ops Typeface, which inspired by comics. Um, I also help with the I also help with a project about three London groups, Brazils and Spons and Eastern migrants raising funds for LGBT groups in Indonesia, and more other visuals for different organizations. So the second part is product. While working on um, this project, it can be said that the ego of being a graphic designer can be fulfilled. But I often think of my experience as, of a, as a salesperson in the UK. At the time, China was always equal with China market, and China is always seen to be an astral concept internationally. Just like Paris is a symbol of romance, 
and China is, the num is a number and market symbol. As Chinese Gen Z, we are regarded as the number in the world, representing the new co uh, com consumer force from developing countries. So I thought, oh, I'm in China now, I know people and everything here, I have nothing to lose. Why don't I try to get into the market in order to learn more about the relationship between China and the Chinese market? So during the 2020 COVID outbreak, I used most of the time at home to create and started to, to contact the factory online. In Chinese factory, it's hard to make small order. The biggest challenge every time I negotiate an order with an experienced boss is how to make myself look like someone with thousands of orders. And finally, it's convenient then to make order for me of 100 pieces. The process is always very funny. Um, so this is some products I make during that time. They are also sold in the malls. And the third part about the factory, because of production, I have assist to many different factories in person. This is the large, largest fabric market in China, where you can ride a motorcycle through one fabric store after another. It is endless and wild. In 2018, China's textile export reached 21 billion meters, accounting for about one-fourth of the world's textile exports. In the process of visiting different factories, I always meet many children who are left in the corner. They are the, all the children of people who work in the factories. I found that their personality has two extremes. One is very enthusiastic, the second is extremely afraid to communicate with people. Because of the parents' long working hours, all, often o over 12 hours, most of their time our school is basically spent in the factory. All of this caught my attention. When the Western media talk about made in China, it start talking about those huge and practical issues, like wakes, working hours, labor security, etc. But as a country that attach great importance to family responsibility, when I talk to many practitioners, I found that the driving force for them is for to, making mon to make money is often for the family, especially for their children. Behind this complex economy miracle of China, the motivation of individual is very simple, but this more important factor has been overlooked. In an insecurity environment, when those factory owners make money, they want to make more money. But in the process of expansion, they are always paying again that bond to lose, no matter whether the business expansion is successful or not. The emotional companionship and education of the children will definitely be missing. So I started to think, if the discussion cannot be completed through simple mor moral uh, criticism, then with such a huge topic and my limited ability here, um, what can I do for the individual? So from 2019 to 2021, I have been to the factory almost every weekend to see Xinxin and her sister, two daughters of the factory owner. I think co-creation can be the effective company, so I bring all my painting tools and share with them. From simple painting at the beginning to complex clothing design later, in the busy factory environment, we created a mini factory in the corner, using the resources and environment of the factory to maximize their talent, transforming high efficient industrialized machine into tools that allow them to see their talents. We are still in touch um, these days, and they keep showing me their new work. Creation seems to have really become their way of fighting loneliness in the factory. The past few years has been crazy, yes. Tensions between countries, people, scrapes, and fear. The world seems to be in a bad mood. I think if design can be used it to diffuse misunderstandings and hatred at such a time, and and used as a tool for expression and connection. This might be what I want to do with design. Last year, I moved to Germany to work and live. I feel that the shock and mixing of cultures still affecting and shaping me as environment change and would continue to shape and influence my design. Maybe that's my way of design approach, to throw myself into a new environment and be changed fully unconsciously. At the end, I want to share a little story. 
Um, when I lived in Germany for about half a year, once I went to a supermarket to check out, my mom wanted to say thank you to the cashier, but my mouth wanted to say danke, so I say, thank you. <laughs> this is my talk today. Thank you for listening, and this, thanks again for, it's not that for the invitation.